Welcome back to the regression exercise. Today we're going to train a model that can predict a number, a real number. Let's give it a nice headline. I'm not sure if you tried this before, but you can have these text uh, elements as part of your IPython notebook. And I'd also like to point out that this exercise is based on the SciPy 2070 scikit-learn tutorial by Alex Gramford and Andreas Müller. So I didn't come up with this one. So credit by credit is due. Remember that Andreas Müller is one of the authors of the scikit-learn Python library and he's also the author of the course book. Hope you already had a look at the book. As I said before, the idea is really for you to watch the videos, but then also use the material that I show in the videos to get a deeper understanding. And I think the book is the best way to do this. We're going to use matplotlib today. And again, use the pyplot as plot, so we don't have to write matplotlib.pyplot all the time. I'm going to import numpy as mp. The first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to get some data, and it's the same data as we had in the lecture. And what we use, we're going to use a linear space, numbers from 0 to 10, and we want 100 numbers in that space. Let's have a look at that quickly. As you can see, we have 100 numbers in the range from 1 to 10, and they are linearly spaced. We're going to use some random data, and for that we're going to set a random state. And the idea for this is that the numbers are random, but they are random for you in the same way that they're random for me so that we can actually compare the results that your code will be comparable to mine. And that's why we're setting the random state here. And we set it to 42. We're going to generate some Y data. And for that, we're going to combine the sign, just like in the lecture, with a power function both on this linearly spaced data that we defined earlier. And we compare that with some randomness from a normal distribution. And again, we can have a look at this. And again, these are 100 numbers. What we want to do now is to plot this. So we have our data x and our data y. And if you just plot it like this, it will give you a connected line. We don't want it here. We want individual points and we want them in blue. So if we do BO for blue and points, we just get these nice points. And as you can see, you can kind of still see the sign, but uh, we added some randomness. And our goal is now to fit a linear regression through this data. So we have to do one thing now. We're going to reshape the data. If we look at the shape of our data x data, then we see that the one dimension is not specified. It's implicit. And we want to make this explicit. Well, we want a 100, 1. So we don't just want it to be a vector. We want it to be a matrix. And for that, we're going to reshape the data using this command. And now you can see that it's explicit that this is a 100 times 1 matrix. As we've done before, we're going to perform the train test split. So from sklearn model selection, we're importing train test split. 
and we're going to assign this accordingly. Based on the data X and the data Y, we set the size of our test set to 25%. And again, we specify the random state to an arbitrary number. But if you use the same number, you will get the same train test split and your results should look the same as mine. So let's start with the linear regression model. It's in the package sklearn.linear underscore model and it's called linear regression. That worked out. So we can set the regressor to linear regression. So here we instantiate the class linear regression. And we can inspect it a bit. As I showed you before, there's always the help function that you can call on any type of object. And here you see the different attributes. I'm going to explain them so we don't need to read them now. So what we want to do here is we want to train our regressor. And we always do that through the fit function in scikit-learn. And that's all we have to do to train a model. So what we're going to do now is we're going to inspect the different values that we fit. First, we look at the weight coefficient, and then we look at the y-axis intercept. For the coefficients, we have the attribute coef underscore, important to have the underscore. So that's the slope for the first dimension. But we only have one dimension here. And we can now look at the intercept, right, where the y-axis is. And for that, we have the regressor intercept underscore. So this is all we need to plot our linear model. So now we want to draw this. And for that, we need to make sure that we give the plot the right range. So we're going to determine the minimum and the maximum value. So now we're going to draw our regression line. And for that, we take the minimum point, the starting point, and the maximum point, the ending point. And this is just a combination of the smallest point in our data set uh, on the x-axis, so the first point, times the regression coefficient plus the intercept. That's where our y-axis starts. And the maximum point that we have in the data set is the maximum in the x data times the slope plus the intercept. And we can plot this now with this command. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw our regression function. And the regression function that we're going to show is going from the smallest x point that we have and what this means for our equation, the value will be computed here, and this highest x point and what this means on the y-axis. So this is the regression function that we have here. And what we want to see now, of course, is how well this actually fits our data. So we're also going to plot our train data. So let's just see how well we capture the train data. And you can see that we get the general tendency right, I would say. But of course, there's a lot of errors, right? I mean, these points are very far off from our regression line. But still, that's the basic idea. This is a simple linear regression model that we just successfully trained. We only looked at the training data so far. But what we want to do, of course, is make predictions about the future and make predictions for our testing data and for that, we're now going to predict the values for the y based on the x test. So we take the regressor 
predict function. Remember, every model in scikit-learn has the predict function that can make prediction. And then we give it the x test. And we can have a look at our predictions, like we've done before. These are all the values. But let's look at the first five and compare them by looking with the y test. We don't want to just do that through inspection. We want to compare the score. So we use the regressor score function based on the x test and the y test. And this is doing the prediction and then comparing the mean squared error that we computed before in the lecture. Now, we can of course also plot this. So let's plot this nicely. So first we take the x test and the y test. Now we make it blue points. And we can give it a label so that it has a nice legend. So far so good. So these are our testing points. And we also in the same plot want the predictions. So again, they're based on the x test values, but they're our pred test. And we make them red x's and give them a label prediction. And we can see that we have a linear model, right? So we only have points on this linear line. And we see that there's quite a lot of difference. Um, we can also add the model. Now, this is the simplest model. We already saw that you might even have learned how to do linear regression in school. Let's try the k nearest neighbors regression model that we talked about in the lecture. And that's in the package sklearn neighbors. And it's got k neighbors. And let's start simple here. And the number of neighbors is set to one for the first test, let's say. We train the model in the exact same fashion using the fit function and we use the x train and the y train and this gave us a model that we can now use to make predictions let's keep the convention so we can reuse some code so we do the y pred test and we assign that by making new predictions and we make this with with the predict function on the test data so since we use the same values we can reuse this code. So I'm just copying, pasting it from the upper line. So again, we're plotting the test data that we expect and the test predictions that we're making. And we can see we're not that far off anymore because we don't just fit a simple linear model in our data. We have a different approach. So what we can do here is another step is compute the score again for the K nearest neighbor with the value n, we get a slightly worse result than for a system with a linear regression. So let's increase the number of neighbors. Let's put it to three. Now I rerun this line. So I reassign a regressor. I fit another regressor and then I make new predictions. So our predictions look a lot more like the data. And this is confirmed in the score. So it did improve. Now you can play a bit more, play a bit with the n nearest neighbors um, parameter and use maybe some more models that you find in the scikit-learn library to see which is actually the best model to fit this simple type of data. You can also extend this by playing with the Boston housing data. 
So hosting housing data set in scikit-learn can be found here. So it's packaged in a nice function and you can use this to learn the housing prices that I told you about. So from scikit-learn.datasets, we import the function load Boston. And if we call that function, then we get this array that has the data and the targets. So the data is, of course, the information about the house and the targets is the price of the apartment. There's also additional information. Just read up on it here on the data set and then have fun with the regression.